<laughs> I've got a little bit greedy. Yes, get in. Typical river bream that one. Good morning. We are on a bitterly cold River Trent. Um, I've just checked the temperature, it's just one degree. There's a freezing cold wind blowing, but there is a little bit of extra water in the river. I'm already set up at the peg, as you can see. It's gonna be an interesting session. I've only got two hours, so it's gonna be a very focused and a very targeted session. I'm hoping with a little bit of extra water in and a little bit of color, I'm hoping there's gonna be a chance of one or two bream. Now the approach for today is gonna to be all about bream. I've picked a line at about 40 meters. I think usually when people fish this stretch here, they cast a little bit further across. However, the rod that I've come to try out today, I've only got two hours to try it. I think this rod's gonna be ideal for this sort of a fishing on a normal river. So I'm only gonna be fishing at 40 meters. I'm the only angler here. There isn't another angler all the way down. So I'm quite confident if there are any bream in the area, they, you know, I'll be able to draw them in with the ground bait and just put in the feed in. And I think 40 meters is it's just short of halfway, but there's plenty of flow there. I'm gonna be kicking off with just a plastic feeder. I'm not gonna clip up. So I'm not gonna be fishing in exactly the same place all the time. And all I'll do is just feed a nice big bow out and just fish it like we would do for bream with nice big chunky baits. Now, because I had no idea what the condition of the river was gonna be like, I had to cover my options as, as regards the bait bike for today. So if the river had been clear, I would have gone down the maggot route. So I've got some lovely fresh maggots here. These are from Wickersley Angling this morning. I would have fished it with a maggot feeder if the river had been clear. However, that's not the case. So they can stay in the bag. I have got a few on the bait tray for the hook. So I've got casters. I've got a pint of casters. These again were fresh this morning from the tattle shop and I've got half a kilo of worm as well. So that is gonna be the main core of what I'm gonna be doing today because of the condition of the river worms and casters as regards the ground bait mix i've been experimenting quite a lot recently and this is one of the mixes that i've been using and it's the mix that i've decided to use today and it's a 50 50 mix of ringers dark so we've got a nice lovely strong fish meal mix i am hopefully going to be targeting bream today um, so that's obviously a fish meal mix and i've actually mixed it 50 50 with this betaine green the dynamite silverfish mix which again is a green mix but that just sweetens the mix up which is something i've been trying out recently and that mixes up really really nice this has gone through a, a nice fine um sieve as you can see it's a lovely dark dark green mix which i you know i've got loads of confidence in it's nice and fine it's got the strength of fish meal because we're after bream and we've got a bit of sweetness in there as well which might help us catch any skimmers that might be in the area as you can see it looks a little bit clearer here than what it is but it, there is a little bit of color in the river it's just a lovely nice green dark fish meal mix and hopefully that's going to draw in one or two bream now as regards the bait tray i always like to keep it simple anyway but we're targeting bream that's it so what we've got on here is we've obviously got the ground bait that's the lovely mix that you've just seen. That's just covered up in there out, out, of the, uh, out of the rain. I've got some casters on the bait tray in water. I've got some very roughly chopped worms. I'm only here two hours. Usually I would have washed these off if I was in a march before the march and, and cleaned them, but there's a bit of soil left in there as you can see. I've got some worms themselves, obviously, so I can chop some more up as and when I go. But obviously these are here. These are whole worms that I can use for the hook as well. Got the worm scissors on the tray and then i've got some lovely fresh bronze maggots there really just for the hook i'm not going to be introducing any of those but like i say had it been a um, a clear river i would have fished with those in a maggot feeder and just fished for bites i don't think we're going to be using them today but i'm going to kick off with them on the hook but i'm not going to be feeding any now 
Now as regards the feeders, this is the style that I'm going to be using today. I love these on rivers. Uh, the side weighted versions as you can see in the plastic which means they're great for getting your bait down to the bottom now normally on this stretch of river a 30 gram feeder would be all right however there's a bit of extra water in and it's colored so i think i'm going to need about a 40 gram so i've got a 40 gram here i've got a 45 gram version as well but if it is a little bit stronger than than i thought then I've got a 60 gram version there that I can go to. But as always on rivers, that'll just be trial and error. And I won't really know what I'll need till I get the feeder on and get out there fishing. Well, I've had six casts now with maggots on. First, I kicked off with two bright. Um, bronze maggots on and then I switched to three maggots but I haven't had a sign I haven't had a single indication no small fish nothing at all there's quite a bit of rubbish coming down but that's what's expected on rivers that have got extra water in it and they are colored like this so I think I'm gonna go down the worm route now I'm gonna put a nice chunky piece of worm on and see yeah see if we can get a reaction from that I've just put a piece of worm on it's only been in a minute and I've got one. Looks like a decent skimmer. Got a size 14 MXB3 on. Yes, get in. Unbelievable. Just a switch of hook bait. I've got one straight away. Sometimes you think there's nothing there and then you change your bait and you get one straight away. So, only there all the time. Big skimmer or borderline bream. It's in great condition. Typical river bream, that one. Really round. Just looked in the corner of its mouth. Fantastic, just a quick change like that and it results in a fish. just the tail of a dendra I'm only fishing point 12 as a hook length just because I just want to really fish for a bite but I mean even point 12 will give you a chance of, of landing decent fish just 50 centimeters long all I did was put a tail of a dendra on I'll just wash it for you tail of a dendra just look like that plenty of the hooks showing but it's a wide gape hook the MXB3 so it's great for these chunkier baits because there's less chance of it actually going over on the point of the hook which is why I love this pattern for you know fishing two pieces of worm or, or just worm generally let's see if there's any more out there Again, that had only been in, I bet that was in 30 seconds. I just finished feeding the bow out. It's absolutely freezing. That wind's blowing upstream, so it means that I'm facing into that really cold wind. This one's kiting down to the right, this one out of that flow. There's a lot of rubbish coming down. There is extra water in it. It's quite, you know, there's quite a bit of color in it. So this one's coming up now, down under my bank. This one's coming in, closer in this one. Looks like another bream. Another good fish, bigger this one. <laughs> How about that on a freezing cold day? Can't really hold that one up with one hand. Look how thick set that is. Typical river bream. Good four pound that. Just up in the middle of the bottom lip.
So we've got to stick with worm, haven't we? All I'm doing is hooking the tail of a dendra. Not a really, really big dendra, but a nice chunky one. Got to think about and seeing it as well, but if you nip the end off, that's going to let all that lovely juice out. And that's not too big, you know, even fish of a pound, a pound and a half can take a hook bait of that size. And like I say, these wide gay pucks are perfect for these, for these chunkier baits. Just putting quite a few casters through. I'm going to be positive today, and I love to be positive on these sorts of rivers. I am feeding chop worm in there. Really coarsely cut, quite chunky. I thought if I wanted a fish today, I wanted it to be a decent fish. I'm just going out to that spot at about 40 meters. I've got a 45 gram feeder on now. Usually on here, you'd be able to get away with less than that. But like I said, there's extra water and it is coloured. And then all I'm doing is that feed is not heavy enough to hold the bottom on its own if I was tight up to the feeder it's too light for that but by feeding a bow out that's helping take the pressure off off the line and by getting it just right and feeding the right amount of line out it's just, just holding bottom Going to be about there i think i'll just leave that there it's a two and a half ounce tip i've got in this the main reason i'm here today is to test this rod out i'm going to be fishing the trent quite a bit this year and i wanted to know what this new distance rod was like it's 12 foot rated at 90 gram and I, th I thought it would be perfect for fishing on on this sort of a river with this sort of flow and up to now it's been absolutely bang on I've just had two really fast bangs on the tip, missed them both, missed that one as well. They could be smaller fish, they're completely different bites from the bream bites, so they could be roach. And if that's the case, I'm just going to cut back on the, the amount of casters that I'm putting through and just stop putting more worm through to be really nice to single out those better bream if they are still there. I've literally only got two hours today, so I'm not doing things like I would do in a match. Normally I would have washed these worms off. So I'm just roughly cutting them just to get plenty of that juice in there in the swim. I like a little indication. That's got to be on. Yes. That was a drop back that time. I've had about five casts now without a fish. Just had those two quick indications that look like small fish. I thought they'd gone, but I've just kept piling that worm in. I've cut back a little bit on the caster, but I've replaced that with extra worm. So I'm still feeding quite confidently, but with more worm. This was just on two little pieces of worm. One about four inch long, and then I've just put one about an inch on just to stop it going over the point of the hook feels another good fish so strong these river bream especially when they go side on to the flow as well bit slack on this inside so it's obviously easier to play them on the inside another good fish Look 
Look at that, that's a really heavy fish that one, that's over four pound, five pound easy that one. Might even go a little bit heavier, really thick, healthy, thick set fish. Hooked in the middle of the top lip, as you can see. A disgorger job that one. There we go. Yeah, it's a really heavy fish that one. Typical river bream. Stunning fish, look at that. Pop him in the net. Well, I had four or five casts without a sign, so I went back to back onto Maggot just to see if there were any smaller fish there or anything. I only had three casts with it, quick casts, never had a sign. Just gone back to worm now. Just a piece of dendra, only about three inches long. And it's only been in 30 seconds and it was the best bite of the day. Nearly pulled the rod in. Feels like another good fish. Looks like another big skimmer. Really positive. Another good fish. These really are healthy, chunky river bream. Just in the corner of the mouth, that one. Beautiful fish. Absolutely. Look how thick set that is. Brilliant. Went a little bit quieter then, I had a couple of casts without anything, but I was sure there was still some fish there. So I just decided to drop the feeder about three meters further downstream, just to try and pick one off. I didn't get a bite straight away, it's probably been in four minutes, five minutes, but I picked another one up. Another good bream. Fight so hard these fish, but they are heavy. Get that one, bit of a shuffle that one. Disgorge your job this one. A bit further down, I really wanted it. I was just at the back end of the swim. Everyone's really thick, beautiful fish. Well, the river's actually come up two or three inch while I've been fishing and I think that quiet spell, I think it's just pushed them closer in. I've just had three casts. I've just dropped the feeder a little bit closer now out of that main flow. It's gone straight over again. Maybe they've just come this side. Maybe when I first got here, I caught one or two further out, but then at 40 meters. But then as the flow's increased a little bit and the, you know, it's come up, I think they've actually come closer in. But whatever the reason, we found one or two fish. Just about get my hand round that one. I've almost cut out the caster now. I'm only putting about 
six to eight casters in each cast now. The rest of the feeder is full of chopworm. Just dropping this feeder slightly shorter now, more like 30 meters now. I don't know why that line seems to be better now, but like I say, it, it might be because the water levels come up and they've just come in on that inside of the edge of that main flow. I don't know, but the end result is good. But whatever the reason, they do seem to be on that line now. <laughs> I've got a little bit greedy. It's just gone over two hours. And I really wanted to finish on a fish. And I've hooked one. I really, really want to land this one. It's been a brilliant two hours. The Combine Harvester is behind me now in the field. I really wanted to finish on a bream and it looks like we've done it. Let's see if we can get this one out and then we'll have a look what's in the net. There's like another good fish. I actually put an extra piece of worm on this time. So just to make it a bit more of a target bait. So there's two beats of worm on that MXB3. Lovely wide gay pumps for these bigger baits. It's gotta be a bream. Yep. Another chunky fish to finish on. There we go. Yes. Fantastic. There's two pieces of worm. Brilliant bream bait, as we know. Just swing that out there. What a great fish to finish on. Well, it's been a brilliant two hours. I didn't even know if I was going to get a bite, never mind fish like this. I've got to go, I'd love to stay longer. Let's have a look what we've got. I think the first fish was the smallest fish, that was about two and a half, three pound. But then they just seemed to get bigger and bigger. What about that for a net of bream? Absolutely fantastic. One of the best two hours fishing I've had, especially on a river at this time of year. Off you go, get the size of those. What a fantastic session. Well, that's got to be one of the best two hour sessions I've ever had on a river. I have got loads more session videos like this getting uploaded to this channel. So if you want to see those, please give this one a thumbs up and don't forget to hit subscribe. So thanks for watching and I really look forward to seeing you next time.